Greetings everyone and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO playing as the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Not Great Britain and Northern Ireland, but just the United Kingdom of Great Britain, that's it. We don't have the, well, the red saltier line, so, or the red cross, it is what it is. Oh, well, we do have a red cross, but not, not, not the lines. Anyways, uh, we've got other comments to get to, but let's go ahead and do Let a Lady Speak. Perhaps it is a surprise to the honorable gentlemen in this parliament today, but the ladies of Britain have always had a problem with men speaking over them, proclaimed Maggie to the assembled parliament. Uncharacteristically, the room was silent as she spoke. The women in government know this well, though perhaps the men do not. So, you see, I have taken special care today to ensure the silence of you all from here on out. I think we've come to a point where I've earned enough respect and yes fear for you to all allow me to speak without you erupting in chatter. She smiled to the MPs as she looked over them. Her own party reigned in and the opposition, cowed in submission. No British Prime Minister had ever enjoyed such authority in Parliament before. When Maggie spoke, there were no cheers or protests, there were only open ears. So from here on, I trust you'll all be polite enough to allow me to speak and to legislate without interruption. This is Britain after all, and we have manners here. It's impolite to interrupt, and to interrupt a lady while she's ruling the nation, and monetary reform leads to a decrease in poverty. Ooh, you know, the strangest thing happened yesterday, dear, said Dennis Thatcher as he skimmed through a newspaper. And what would that be, said, uh, or asked, Margaret, finishing the last of their breakfast and scraping the eggs out of the pan. Well, you know, I stopped for an extra cup of coffee on this way to the, uh, my office. Every day, across from my favorite coffee shop, there is a vagrant with a big red beard leaned up against the mailbox. I hardly notice him, were it not for the beard, dear, it does stick out. Uh, but, well, yesterday, as I was on my way in for the coffee, something seemed odd. It took a moment for me to realize that the mailbox didn't have its vagrant anymore. Can you believe that it bothered me? I worried something might have happened to him. Well, yeah, you can't help those who won't help themselves, dear, uh, said the lady, nearly done plating the food. Uh, but, yes, but that's what was so peculiar, Margaret. When I went inside to order my coffee, there was working behind the desk was that very same man with the red beard. He'll hardly get rich on the job, but at least he's off the streets. Nice. We have less monthly population, which... Okay, cool, you know, whatever. More recruitable population factor, stability works for construction speed, yes. Uh, research speed, factory output, dockyard output, taxable, taxable population factor, yes, please. Income fa rate factor, yes. What more could you ask for? Alright, my friends, now let's do the next focus. I I want to say at the time of this recording, there's probably not a focus, like a smaller focus tree, like with Wales and Scotland. First, to take out Ireland, because, like I said in the last episode, I really want to take them out, man. I really do. Increase pay patrols, or uh, city patrols and pay. Improve intelligence agency. Oh, let's do that one. Get more stability. The British police are the best in the world, and to claim otherwise would be hi hyperbole. The bobbies of London and the headquarters at Scotland Yard are famous symbols of the city. Books have been written about them, as well as popular radio serial serials, movies, and television programs. Truly, they define Britain as much as John Bull and the roast beef. But what do you do with the collection of such fine organizations? Why expand the ranks and increase their pay, of course? At least that's one way of thinking. While we would like to fund everything to the max, the economy's tepid shape precludes us from doing so for now. We have to decide if increasing the number of police officers is worth it, or if other projects will return more pounds for every one we spend on them. And right now we have 25.3 billion for the GDP, because last time we had quite the collapse of the GDP, which was painful to say the least to watch. We still have 110% influence, wow, that's pretty good. We want to uh, promise change in the countryside as well. But we'll get there eventually, and then maybe get some more elite support eventually, just because we'll probably need just a little bit more. Cool. We can only get 1.61 political power today. Very good. Last time we did we did cut construction spending a little bit. So we'll definitely see where we're at. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What? That? <laughs> oh, shnikes. Bad words. Wow. <laughs> wow. I am... Oh, oh, hmm. You know, yesterday I was I was in an up, emotional upheaval because of the GDP. But <clears throat> seeing um, whoa, holy crud, Reno's minus nine point eight billion. Uh, this this warms my heart. I love seeing that annual income rate. Jesus Christ, that's amazing. I love people. I love it when people are poor. <laughs> oh man, I think most people agree with me there too. Ah, oh, that's so great. Militarize the police? A police station in every town. Just casually increasing the amount of uh, p police officers there are, but that's okay. Militarize them. Why not? Who cares? There was once a time when a simple billy club and a revolver was enough to make law enforcement prepare for any circumstance. Nowadays, our police officers find themselves confronting criminals armed with weapons such as the resistance terrorists used in the Civil War. We should consider arming our officers to meet this threat. Military equipment will give our officers the tools to handle any problem and provide a degree of intimidation as well. However, military-grade equipment comes with the military-grade price tags. And before we say yes, we should think if other methods of crime prevention are more effective. Hey, man, just be like in America where you can get some like military-grade equipment on the cheap because the military has upgrades and stuff sometimes. So, hey, look. Get it for dirt cheap if you can. 
That's a great thing. Ah, oh, I love it. Love it. Cool. Cool, so a couple of other comments included, like, I was just talking about as soon as I began this video, how um, I wanted to invade Ireland. Well, we are the United Kingdom of just Great Britain, not Northern Ireland, someday. So if we can't do it in this campaign, invade Ireland, then definitely in the next campaign, when I play as England, I'll probably go with the resistance path, with the Himmler path, and then go from there and do what we need to do. Um, hopefully to invade Ireland whenever they get you know their little tree up and going. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully someday. We should be okay without doing this. We have 290 out of, was it, 515, so let's go ahead and get some more uh, GDP. Why not? Cool. Ah, yes, liquid reserves. Not bad, not bad, actually. Ah, oh, it's gonna be so nice. So nice. So, cool, another one is, uh, someone recommended that I play as Burgundy sometime. I will, I'm not sure when. That's probably one of the nations I'm gonna do far down the line, just because I wanna see what the world has to offer before we actually play Burgundy, and just, you know, get used to how they kill the opposition. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. Uh, cool. That's done. That's done. Let's grab some upgrades for APCs because I still want to make APCs because I love APCs. Is this a chieftain? That is tanks, IFBs. I don't really have any point for you. Basic APCs. Cool. We need more army XP too. Uh, I'll have these guys train as well. So the act passes. Great. Regulated public meetings with outlawed public meetings. Oh, we lose political power, but okay. Well, everyone say gets more support, I guess. 1.6 still isn't too bad, so whatever. Uh, so militarize the police. Very good. Improve our intelligence agency. I don't really want to have any more costs for now. Every eyes, eyes in every city. One lady overall. <clears throat> mm hmm. Silence the old guard. We could do that, but not really. Uh, study the results. That's not bad. I do want to get to reveal our motive. The new superpower, England. So the royal army has exerted itself tremendously and provided us with some valuable data on how our opponents likely to handle itself in battle. We will need to assess the data and use it to our advantage. Should we ever have to face them in an actual war? Though there's still there's still hope that the UK will never have to wage war again. We will become more ready than ever to defend our kingdom. Or our United Kingdom. So another one was... Uh, so I said uh, people want me to play as Burgundy. I will eventually. But someone recommend I take out Burgundy in this campaign. Which sounds like fun. I don't know if I'll be able to just because... Well, it's, this is a very scripted, narrative-driven game. Um, the Education Crisis. Military Austerity. Alchemy. Oh. Oh, okay. But, uh... Go ahead and keep slashing stuff. Almost minus 10 billion. Jesus, that's so amazing. Yes. But anyways, um, I don't know, just because everything's scripted. If they were, if Hadrius would have won the Civil War, <clears throat> then maybe we'd have an option, but with Bowman here and him doing Bowman things, I'm not really sure. And Oh, are they? The hot wind blowing. Did they finish or they can't do stuff? Okay, well, whatever. Um, What do we have down here? Uh, campaign stuff. No, thank you. And meet with the industrial giants. We'll probably do that. Good. And we still have 100% influence. Study the results, and then reveal our motive. The reunification of the UK and our outwitting of Germany and the US has left us in good standing internationally. That should believe that we should go one step further and declare Britain to be the fifth superpower. Both the Germans and Americans will not be best pleased with the announcement, but it's necessary if Britain is to return to the righteous place and stand shoulder to shoulder, eye to eye with the rest of the world. Well, hopefully no one decides to nuke us after that, and their GDP went down again. Hmm. But now we're slowly raising it back up. Slowly. Slowly. Incredibly slowly. Uh, we need some more army XP so we can get some APCs in our battalions here. That'd be nice. Support weapons. Nice. 1972 already. Jeez, this is... We're getting far in the game, man. This is the farthest I've ever been so far at the time of this, this recording. But anyways, uh, someone recommended I might want to go to war with a certain nation over some certain islands. But uh, it looks like... If I wanted to do that, I might piss off the Americans a little bit too much. I did. I just realized that the Falkland Islands are owned by America. <laughs> Falklander, huh? Um. Uh, you know, I don't know, America. I, I like it, but how about a new superpower once we do a Great Britain? Yes. More jobs. In spite of all obstacles, Thatcher has done it. Great Britain is resurgent. Though many data we could ever recover from our greatest defeat and subsequent German subjugation, we have. Wales and Scotland have been re reunited with England, and the German presence in Cornwall has been dislodged. We can now stand free of their influence. A new era has begun for our country, and we are now ready to compete with the rest of the world again. And let us hope that our power continues to rise so that the world can once again realize the power of Great Britain. Honestly, with us, with our GDP decreasing, it feels like it's like our GDP is like leaking or something, and we don't know where the hole is. Anyways, a new superpower, England. From London, AP. 
When one thinks of England, typically they think of fish, fish and chips, pastoral countryside, and the works of Shakespeare, but the Prime Minister, Maggie, Maggie Thatcher, has more lofty ambitions. In a speech to Parliament today, she declared that England has risen in status and could be considered a great power once again. PM Thatcher believes that England has gained a significant amount of respect from its peers, and this respect has manifested itself in both the U.S. and Germany trying to court it. With new advances in the English military, she believes that her nation is now impervious to enemy attack, and the desire to, of the world to court it speaks to its strength. <clears throat> Outsiders are more skeptical, though, with the claim being regarded as dubious by the Brookings Institute or Institution. In a report, they claim it's unlikely a nation with a limited sphere of influence outside of its own borders, like England, could call itself a global superpower. Ooh, may there be peace in the North, yes. Um, such as. Uh, say, especially since it lacked the hallmarks of other superpowers, such as nuclear weaponry. They also report England's diplomatic relations are merely a result of the, them holding a valuable geopolitical position, not because they were respected by foreign powers. But still, the English still dream of being the British Empire again, and they won't let down talk like that get in their way. <laughs> Just, okay, sure, whatever. You do you, England, and we'll see what happens. Oh, this is looking beautiful. Just... Oh, it pleases me so much. Let's see, best infantry. Oh, we were also converting some of our divisions to the best infantry as well. That's why it's such low manpower. Motorized. Oh, we already have some uh, APCs down here. Don't mind if I do. Organization doesn't really change too much, and that's okay with me. And the GDP went down again. There's got to be a hole here that we're leaking or something. There's got to be some sort of hole or something. Because it's barely going up now that we're continuing to invest even more and more and more into it. So something's going on. Uh, urban centers. Hold a speech in Parliament now. Nice. 0.69? Eh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Over here, we are currently at 87. Or, well, next month will be 87%. We're still raising our efficiency slowly, slowly up. Oh, you just had to get one of these, huh? A great Britain, my friends. A truly great Britain. Uh, next up, improve our intelligence agency. Uh, of course, internal strife does not always happen to internal origins. The CIA and Scotland finance supplied and supplied the resistance before the E Civil War, the English Civil War, and they're so eager to find ways to subvert us. They have there spying on us before the war as well, and the Germans would obviously prefer a more cooperative government in place. The best way to fight fires with fire, MI5, needs to be streamlined. To catch us prey, we must be fast and agile. We need to do more and do, do quickly. The result will be enhanced security, enhanced counter espionage. Foreign agents will find espionage a harder task when our position is made even more secure. 100% uh, stability is always nice to have, but. As much as I love the GDP growth, it's shrinking, even though it's going up annually. Uh, I'd like to pay off the debt someday, but GDP is all that matters right now. It's really all that matters. How much are we getting a day? 0.112 minus 0.02. It's about 0.9, that's not bad. Structural improvements, very cool. Oh, can I do that one? Thank you. Mm, keep getting more armor and breakthrough, that'd be nice. Because now they have 155. Not bad, not bad. Hopefully we'll never have to use them, but we'll see what happens, of course. Mm hmm. Oh, what do we have here? Free? Uh-oh. Oh, man, we're building it. Actually, I don't think this really hurts our spending too much. Oh, look at that, minus 10 billion. That's amazing. Construction spending. Um... Well, we've made all the roads in England, or the United Kingdom, pretty good, I, I'd say. Um, I could build up more civilian factories, but that really wouldn't do much worse. I don't want to spend, build too many military factories, because we're doing we're doing okay. We're not doing great. Obviously, we could use more main battle tanks. But other than that, I think we're doing pretty well. Let's do that. We could probably actually lower this by one more, then. Wow. And how many factories do we have now? We still have enough. Jesus Christ, that's amazing. Um, you know what? If we want to get go nuclear someday, how about one in every state? <laughs> this definitely won't backfire someday. One in every single state. Northern Wales, great. Improve our intelligence agency. A police station in every town. I don't want to raise the cost just yet. Decryption. Vote on the Fair Employment Act, yes. Security cameras have been proven effective time and time again. They help with valuable, unchallenging... Unch unchallengeable evidence that police can use to solve crimes and the presence deters criminal activity from taking place. Unfortunately, they put them inside buildings requires the permission of the property owner and the footage isn't shared with the authorities unless it's requested. The Camera Act will allow authorities to place security cameras in places that they determine crime may occur regardless of the owner's permission. Ooh. This footage is also shared with a central monitoring system. Now we can gather valuable evidence anywhere at any time for any reason. <sighs> We're totally not becoming a police state. Totally not. I don't... Oh, I really hope this doesn't raise the budget. So if we minus... 9.54. Which it shouldn't. They're just nuclear reactors. I hope we can be get a nuclear program going, though. I closed it to open it back up again. Uh, that's just me. 
So let's save on our political power for now because we're going to have this act to vote on. So uh, we should have enough political power to get enough votes for whatever we need. Hey, look, we can do this again. Motorize, great. Even slightly more armor and slightly more HP. Look at that soft attack. That's so amazing. I love the camera act. Doing this to protect you. Unfortunately, some people have raised concerns regarding our new law enforcement policies. Some of these concerns have not are that they have are not entirely unreasonable and are worth discussing over tea. No one wants to return to the battle days during the German occupation, and neither do we. These changes are in no way an attempt to impose a police state on the good people of England. Decent citizens have nothing to complain about. None of these measures are intrusive, at least not compared with the alternative. Well, they prefer crime, violence, and terrorism to some extra police and security cameras. The choice is obvious. They just need to see it. And if they still don't see it, well, that raises some questions about them than it does answers from us. Let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Oh, wait, that's that's way too ahead of time. Uh, that's still ahead of time. Oh, 72. We're done there, then. 77. Oh, engineers. That would be good. Cool, cool, cool. And... Oh, yeah, we got a vote on this. I wanted to spend it on something else, but... Let's see, 204... Yeah, we just do UE again, United England. We should be fine. It's still barely going up, but you know what? It, it's doing okay. It's doing okay. Good, good, good. And let us vote. And I don't have to worry about this again. 281 out of... 515, it looks like. Yes, 515 again. It's supposed to be. Good. Good. Where is that? Jet cast. Very good. Mm, 70, 70. Stealth technology. That looks really cool. Uh, I think we did everything for 70 already here that we can. Yes. It's 72, by the way. Just to remind everyone. Heavy aircraft. Um, I think we're using a light aircraft still. We can't do that. I don't use those things. Um, land auctions, of course, is done. We're running out of things to do, actually. That's kind of nice. 70. That's a little bit ahead of time. Armor. Well, I guess you doing stuff for APCs. Make sure that they're the best APCs ever known to man. Kind, of course. And with this, we don't have... Oh. It just disappeared. Okay. Doing this to protect you, my friends. Every In every city. Well, we have enough stability for now. So that's the old guard. Eh. We're running out of things to do here. No. Oh, we did this stuff. How about we go and do new RAF bases? Get the cost over with. So most of the air bases dotting England's Emerald Hills are haphazard con constructs built in the frenzy before a sea line. It stands reason that their fair share loss of purpose after 1943. Dirt runways and ramshackle sheds may suffice for biplanes, but not for modern jet fires with an appetite and temper overflowing. Newer large air bases will be built to accommodate our future air fleet. Modern dogfighting favors a preponderance of runways and supply stores over a glut of air bases in the short term's loosest definition. After all, the more fighters we can fly at any town, the likely we'll establish aerial dominance before the enemy does, and we just get a slightly more debt. Just ever slightly, slightly more debt. But unfortunately, I will be right back. Alright everyone, sorry about that, but I had to leave to attend to other matters, but regardless, we are still back here together. And watching our deficit get better and better. Increase GDP. We're still barely going up, but that's alright. We've talked about that enough. Um, we can only have 4.83. Oh. Now we have 5 Omni XP, which we're going to spend very soon, but let's do, do another focus first. Uh, let's see, so we're almost done with we're done with this branch. Uh, we could do more military stuff. We just did new RAF bases. We got 300 more million dollars to the national debt. Motorized stuff. That's not bad. That's not bad. Let's keep going down south. Now, I don't want, like more cost. But a police station in every town. It's come to our attention that many towns and villages lack a vital piece of civic structure. Many areas lack the police officers needed to effectively enforce laws and deter would-be criminals from performing their ghastly deeds. Lawbreaking has thus been rampant in certain sections of our, of our country. The, simple, the solution is simple. If there are too many criminals or crimes for the police to handle, we add more police. Clamping down on crime is a lot of work, and if it needs a lot of people to do it. More officers mean the reach of the law is far larger or longer than it once was. We get more cost, civilian intelligence to others, but we get more political power and stability, even though we don't need any more stability right now. Specified armor development, very cool. Let's just grab some uh, level 3 version then. Do we have anything else up here? Security Act. We already voted for it, so we're good. And then, let's go ahead and do popular supports. Yes. Good, that'll help the GDP just barely, but you know, that's okay with me. Civilian. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Nope. We're going to have one, two, three, three and a half, really working on nuclear reactors. Hopefully we can get some sort of nuclear program going, but we have no idea. 
You guys are 20 combat with equipment capture ratio. That's okay. That stuff is okay. Best infantry, 40. Marines are... Oh, they're only 20 combat with, huh? Look at all the boost those numbers up, though, actually. The pact... The act passes. Great. We replace police with security service. Oh, cool. We get more cost, which is not great, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, infantry divisions... Uh, whatever. Save that for now. That's okay. Oh, and that deficit went back down to a little below or above 10 billion. Minus 10 billion, of course, that being said. Now it's going to go even further down because we have to spend more on police. But eyes in every city. Every town has different people in it. Bankers, construction workers, and clerks. Shop owners, bartenders, and firefighters. Terrorists and criminals, yes, but also loyalists and informants. We can use, it, use this to our advantage. Let's say you're a terrorist. Where would you go if everyone know is a proud supporter of Thatcher? Who can you trust if your best friend is maybe working for MI5? What can you do if you witness, or if any witness, may sell you out to the police? Nowhere, nothing, and no one. That's how rebellion ends before it even begins. We're going a little crazy, I'm not going to lie. We're going just a little mad with power, and maybe we like it. Actually, you know what? Next research, we're going to get some... Another support company. Probably Signal Company. Maybe that one. Still training. Wearing our guys out, but that's alright. We didn't need tanks, right? Blowpipes? Huh. A vicar's vigilant. Light artillery, of course. We got plenty of motorized. Holy cow. Plenty of motorized. Actually, right now, uh, let's go upgrades on medium. Let's go upgrades on high. High priority for upgrades, just because we're lacking a little bit, and that's okay with me for now, just because we're not really at war. Uh, that sucks so much. Alright, one lady overall. There's a Bobby on the corner. There's a man behind the CCTV. That ma that woman watching from the window has mi 5s a number memorized. They have people like them all over England, and they report what they see. The people they report to. They take the information and report that to someone else. Eventually, it makes its way into a document dropped on the desk of the lady in 10 Downing. The lady reads the report. She sees what the Bobby, the camera, and the woman have seen. She knows what the Bobby, the camera, and the woman know. And she acts on it. Now, let's take a good look here. Once we look at this. Oh, I'm not sure why that came back up, but okay. Urban Centers, thank you. Yeah, 58.16, that's not nice. Uh, that's okay. But, which way do we go? An illusion of democracy. More daily political power gain, controlled opposition. What is this, America? Suppress education. Less research people, more political power. Support increases. Uh, a claim, a cl clam. A calm population doesn't revolt. Flat taxes with low income weighted. Less income rate, more daily political power. The Russian way, regulated public meetings. Eh. Ties with aristocrats, eh, that's okay. Now you're aware of Cromwell. I don't know anything about Cromwell at all. So I'm, I'm such an American, I have no idea. This never really interested me before, but now it kind of does. They call her tyrant and anti-democratic oppressor, and one of this is Oliver Cromwell again. Oh. Democratic system tamed. Elite voting with registered voting. Finishing off the liberals. Huh. Are you looking to get rid of the fash, Mr. Mac? Okay, influence, which is okay. The Anti-Fascism Act. Vote on Fair Employment Act. Okay. And more war support. I kind of want to go down this way. Dreams of an Empire. That seems like in the way we want to go. But I also have to keep in mind the next camp, the next campaign when I play this again someday. Hmm. I really want to do Dreams of an Empire. We might... You know what? I might choose this twice then. Off, finish off the Liberals. I don't know, an illusion of democracy is okay. I don't really want to lose... Let's go to flat taxes. Where, where, are, the, where are the taxes? Training, trade, tr laws, medium... Oh, we have medium taxation. Exploit taxation? Oh, flat taxes. Here it is. So we have flat taxes, high income weighted, low income weighted. So GDP to budget. Oh. So we get more stability, but we get less GDP to budget, which doesn't s seem great. Huh, a lot of percentage. Oh, this is, this is middle of the road. And that's up. Alright, let's read one more focus before we do any of that. We'll get down there soon enough. Uh, let's go back up here. Build the carrier screens. Our new carrier will uh, require pr adequate protection once it leaves its birth. Far be it <clears throat> for us to leave a floating island worth 3 million unprotected. Uh, okay. Or three billion pounds or something. Hence, Maud has ordered our Ministry of Defense has ordered several cruisers for our shipyards. These in the carrier will soon form the crux of the royal, new Royal Navy and a well protected one at that. So, Maggie Thatcher couldn't sleep. It's unfortunate. Quite unfortunate. After we do this as well. Uh let's see, industrial giants. Actually, how's that coming along before I read this? Poverty is doing great. 
development is doing amazing. Actually, uh, uh you know what? Go do that. It's fine. Uh, Margaret Thatcher couldn't sleep for years now. She'd been sleepless nights trying to put out, out this crisis or another. Dealing with disloyal ministers, chaos in the party, apathy in wilderness, unhappy superpowers, and whatever else, ungodly indignation or indi indignity she was forced to face by the fools who thought England was done for. Today, however, it was something different. Dennis, her half awake husband, turned towards her. Yes, Margaret Thatcher uh, kept looking at her, thinking, What was it that I was missing? I don't know, dear. I just don't know. It feels like I've slayed all the dragons. I, I just don't know what's next. Well, dear, just what? Just whatever is next, that's politics, isn't it? Maggie was about to retort to something when she realized it hit her. She'd won. She can sleep. Not because the threats to her power were large enough to deprive her of a solution, but because she kept looking for them in peace places and places where they no longer existed. Her brain had become so used to looking for enemies that it became, could not process the fact that none remained. Atop the political cadavers was one woman, one lady, Margaret Thatcher. You're right, Dennis. I suppose you are, anyway. Slowly stumbling into sleep, Thatcher thought of the future as a wide grin appeared on her face. <clears throat> Even if more enemies came, she had total control now. Whoever dared challenge her was doomed. The party was Thatcher. The parliament was away. The parliament was England. Thus, she could arrive only at one logical conclusion. England is Thatcher, and Thatcher is England. Ah. Uh, great. No problems with that, right? Everything's going to be great from here on out. Ah, uh, engineer companies. Ah, uh, we were doing support companies, but let's grab another one. I like that, but let's grab some signal companies. Let's see if they, we can actually use them. Even though logistics would be pretty good, but happy 1973, my friend. It is going to be a great year. Do we still have the oil crisis? It doesn't look like it. Oh, we, we might do. Robert McNamara... M McNamara was elected? What? Um. Oh, man, I was not expecting that, but okay, yeah, we still have the oil crisis. That sucks. Yeah, once the, actually, once the oil crisis goes away, our GDP is probably going to be soaring. Let's hope so, because, man, that oil crisis sucks. Less consumer goods, less stability. Actually, even though we have max less stability, more, we get more political power gain, construction speed. Uh, propor proportional GDP cost modifier, annual growth. Uh, carrier screens. Um, support ships. Let's start doing that, too. A carrier cannot sink an entire navy on its own, much less as we would prefer some. It needs an applicant complement of vessels capable of contributing firepower to the fleet it's designed. And it's pr prescience. Uh, the Royal Navy's budget for the year included new cruisers and submarines. Ships are very much built with firepower in mind. With these, we can prove, should the occasion arise, that England can match its foe toe-to-toe -to -toe in open sea. Well, we'll definitely see. We've got eight ships here, too. So, three god dang new carriers. Holy crudderinos. Oh, before we do that, keep, always keep an eye on that. If we can, thank you. Um, mm, and this one is... Cool. I'll split this group up, then. Uh, hold on, don't do that. I want to... There you go. I mean, our carrier's looking pretty good already, so... Pretty darn nice. 20, oh, wow, 25... Uh, 0.81. 0.81. I thought it was 18. I'm like, what happened to what we were doing? I see. We are very efficient. I love it. Hope you love it as well. Build the carrier's screens. So we need... Imp oh, we actually have to research stuff. So, improve destroyer hull, 1960s depth charges, and sonar. And to do that, we're going to do this first. Uh, we need a variant of county class, county class. 45 million to the national debt. Uh, get five new destroyers. Okay, that's not bad. And remove building ships. Spirit. Okay, well, that's not bad, actually. I can get along with that. 58.16. Oh, boy. So... I don't really know. And actually, military austerity again. It doesn't... It does stuff. Okay, I thought it wouldn't do anything, but we built support ships. And then the backbone of a modern navy. Sure, why not? So the prerequisite and funding set in order, our shipyards cannot begin construction of the Royal Navy's newest aircraft. Their workers will labor tirelessly to ensure its christening at the soonest possible date. The Royal Navy's strength will increase manyfold after its commission, along with England's global reach. All creatures of the sky and sea will learn that the Royal Navy shall soon return to the right, right wise berth high above them. Yes, please. Very, very good. We clearly 1.67 at political power rate. Not bad, my friends. Pretty decent, if I do say so myself. Let's see. Very, very good. We have quite a bit of army XP, too. I love that so much. So, let's make these guys better. Not necessarily bigger, but better. Oh, what's going on? China modernizes. Oh, boy. Perhaps the next will be the Chinese century. Next century will be the Chinese one. Oh, we'll see what happens. APCs. Make sure we do that. Uh, let's see. We're going to duplicate it and make it... 
Basically big tanks. Cool. And before we do that, though, I'm going to make sure we get signal companies on our guys. Because we have enough equipment, pretty much. Except for tanks. That's always that's always going to be a problem. Um, Alright, not bad. So China, you, Republic of China. That's looking actually pretty good. I have been recommended, though, to play as the left KMT and right KMT in Kaiserreich again. I have played as the left KMT before. But I might go back and play it sometime. I don't know. Uh, let's grab some armor and break through. Cool. So, oh, don't forget that first. Hold on. Thank you. Cool. Modern naval war passes. We need to build, finish the program. Jet innovation. I'm going to keep going down that way. I think for now, though, I'm thinking we go down this way. A tamed democratic system. An illusion of democracy. The Russian way. I don't really want to do the Russian way. Ties with the rest of the I mean, it seems okay. But, with well, the way we're po positioning ourselves, we would have enough support anyways. I don't want to lose research speed, too. So, we're going to democratic system tamed. England has embraced democratic principles ever since John King... King John signed the Magna Carta in 1215. It would be a Sisyphean task force to try to undo them. There's no better way to maintain a government than to have the people backing it. However, much much power we grab, we must work within the system to uphold our new administration. We will maintain de democratic elections, but ruthlessly use our political leverage to wrangle parliament or onto our side. This will leave us will leave the people with a chance to vote for us out, but we can also make sure that most of the government apparatus is while we're here. Democracy will be preserved, guided by a strong, thatcher strong hand. This seems... I just thought this is just like, uh... Here we long, actually using whatever means available to achieve whatever means you need to get done. Huey Long and Margaret Thatcher? What? Cool. Oil crisis. Uh, yeah, I really don't know. I mean... Oh my gosh, that's a... Oh, I've never seen a United Arab... Rep oh, that's beautiful. Holy cow, I like this. This is awesome looking. I like this. Hey, we're authoritarian democracies. German economic influence. Huh. Iran? They don't really like us anymore. Despotism, huh? ENI? What is ENI? Oh, Egyptian Revolutionary Command Council? Oh, we have the Republic of Sudan down there. Yeah, everyone probably has the economic crises. Probably. Cool. That's looking good still. That's still looking good. Uh, more to GDP? Yes, please. Thank you. A democratic system tamed. Ah, uh, finish off the liberals. The liberals had a purpose before the failed uprising. They were idealists, or an idealistic as collaborators could be, and try to push the government further towards democracy and social openness. But Thatcher's independence have already secured democracy for England. The liberals have won that battle, and now it's time for them to lay down arms and get with their program. Thatcher will court the remaining parliamentary liberals and entice them to cross the aisle in her party. All liberal holdouts will face intense propaganda against them in the next election. We will use this opportunity to mop up the remains of our opposition. Which, honestly, if we look at the election season... Actually, they've been doing okay. You know, England's been leading the polls in Yorkshire, which is not good. But, uh, whatever. I mean, we can probably get done still quickly, so. We have four, six. They have six as well, which is not good, but that's fine, whatever. I'm really not too worried about that. Very good. Big tanks. Big boys. Uh, APCs probably for the win. APCs. If I threw on IFVs... That does lower your organization, so. That's all we can do for now, that's fine. Commercial combat with, not ideal, but that's okay. Where's the next election, too? Me with industrial giants? Eh. Eh. We're gonna wait for the countryside thing. We can use more war support, too. That's so nice. 7.5, that's awesome. 9.25? Oh, we're about to raise this up. Factory complexes? And we'll get more output, output, and construction speed, even though we don't really need it. Uh, are you looking to get rid of the fash, Mr. Mac? Harold Macmillan is a broken man. His party's been swept into irrelevance, and now he looks forward to par permanent opposition. Yet he remains a charismatic speaker. After all, it's best to keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Let's make a deal. We reach out to Macmill Macmillan and to form a unity government. We will tell him that we are too opposed to fascism, that we are willing to preserve the democratic system with the cooperation. With him on our side, we will co-opt and mo mollify any potential opposition. Let's just secure a grip over the commons for generations to come. We get more influence, but, you know, whatever it is, what it is. I don't want to increase elite support or decrease the popular support right now. But we might have to. Loyalty will increase, but... Mm, honestly, we've done so well. Like, holy cow. Stability? We don't need more stability. We already had 100%. Oh, we need to do more of that. Improve destroyer hulls. That'd be good. Oh, uh, you know what? We have enough political power now. Um, we, we, have, we do have enough. So let's go ahead and raise our effic efficiency up. 
Cool. So now currently it's 9.25%. Our fish our efficiency of next month is 87.5, but next month will still be 92.5. Okay, well whatever. Uh, nothing here yet. Let time go on quickly, quickly, quickly. Invest the money. Good. Are you looking to get rid of me, Mac, Mr. Mac? The anti-fascism pact. This is hardly democratic now, is it? So Macmillan demands real action from a new government, and he shall certainly have it. The remaining fascists in a country are a black stain on the British society like a good wife our Maggie knows how to rub out stains. We will introduce the Anti-Fascism Act in the House of Commons. The bill will make process, pro professing fascist identity a criminal offense. It will become illegal for fascists to speak in public, but that will be the least of the worries, since we all know fascists will be will be thrown into the clink. Macmillan will be delighted, and our nation will be stronger than ever, though. But, you know, it happens. If you're a fascist, we're going to get rid of you. If you don't agree with the government, we're going to get rid of you. And this is supposed to be democratic. That's right. We are very democratic as we're rapidly increasing the amount of electricity and power in the nation. Seems like a crazy idea. And it is. But we love it. We gotta save a little more political power. That's fine. And now let's actually do some destroyer stuff. Destroyers. I don't really know what's the best one. Corvettes? Frigates? I don't understand that. Our destroy but we have destroyers and cruisers here too. So I'm like, what? What's going on? Got a little bit of lag. Oh, it's, it's saving. Slaving? No, it's saving. Oh, good. Look at that hardness. It's so hard. New oh, the new super... Hold on. It says the new superpower, England, minus 301 days. Anti-fascism act, good. Dreams of an empire. Does anyone remember life before the war? Thatcher does. She remembers when Mother England held a quarter of the earth in her embrace. The jewel of India, the jungles of Africa, the wealth of Hong Kong, the claimant or the Clement West Indies. Thatcher remembers it all. She dreams of the day when it will be all of hers, ours again. Yet the empire was shattered in just five years. It will hardly be easier to reclaim it, especially from our position of relatively weakness. We'll have to be patient or clever if she wants to reclaim Britain's birthright. Let's get to work. We oh we already have a majority. Um, hmm. Well, let's see if we can get a super majority. There we go. I'm feeling pretty comfortable about that now. Thank you. Only minus 10 billion. That's all. Only minus. And it gets more big tanks, which just means more APCs. Making it even stronger, stronger, stronger. What is America doing? McNamara. Uh, he's definitely a dude. He's definitely a dude. Maintenance companies, reliability. That's only 14 days. I don't know. I'm not really sure what to research at this point, to be honest with you. Alright, yeah, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. You know, I know currently in this version of the game that I'm playing, uh, the war. What was it? The war between J Japan and China doesn't exist yet, but it is what it is. Ooh, nice. Long live Britain! At long last, Albion is won. The perfidious Welsh, the treasonous Scots, have all been reunited to their rightful place in the great United Cre Britain. Union Jacks fly from Cornwall to Clydesdale. God save the King rings out from the Belfast of Birmingham. Our homeland is in its entirety bows to one sovereign one mo once more. As all thanks to the wise leadership of good old Maggie. She steered England through the turbulence of the Civil War to the mastery over the Isles. She expelled the treacherous Hun. She freed the refugees in Scotland. Most importantly, she united Parliament behind a glorious agenda. She is the greatest homeswoman of the New Britain. And she alone did its future uh, hold. And she alone what its future holds, doesn't she? Hmm. Hopefully. See what happens. See, I'm not even going to be worried about this at all then. 321 is pretty good to have. You know what? Me with industrial giants again. Only 99% influence. Is that all, Maggie? Jeez. So, better industrial equipment. The economy is doing great, and new reforms in industrial subsidizing have resulted in the shipping of un updated industrial equipment across the country. Products are being produced quicker, quicker and cheaper. Further progress and mechanization into the once ossified industrial world will prove a boon to work and manager alike. No more horrible long work hours. No more subpar products screwed in by per imperfect human hands. Industry continues to her march forward. These were a long time coming, however. Increases in budget and a renewed focus on what our industries are making have increased support for a much needed renovation of the country's industrial equipment. Great! And we're going to do urban centers next for even more GDP growth. Because, god dang, there's a hole in the GDP. And I don't like this. Minus 11 billion. That's so nice. For deficits. I love it. I love the deficit right now. Can someone please unite this? Minus 11 billion. Afghanistan looking kind of nice, though. Anything else down here? What's going on here? Republic of Madagascar versus the Jewish version of it. Alright, so we did that. Let's go do another focus first, such as... 
Uh, modernized radar. Before and during the Second World War, British research and implementation of radar systems was unparalleled and worldwide. She firm we fervently believe that technology was an award-winning weapon against the Hun, though undeni undeniably useful, it proved insufficient in stealing our fate. However, mo modernizing our old radar systems would once again give us an edge over our enemies. We will have to be open to such improvements for the sake of the free English skies. Cool, so the Iron Lady stands triumphant. Thatcher, the Iron Lady, looked over, overlooked London. What she saw was but a microcosm of her success. The capital glowing with the wealth she had reaped for her nation. She had achieved much for both herself and the country, and she had fought every inch um, for it. From the enemies of the Civil War, pitiful revolutionaries, to her rivals that arose after the final shot of the war, she had been beaten them all. She had outmaneuvered every single opponent. She had twisted them into knots with her words and actions. She had defeated them in Parliament and in the streets. She had seized power, seized the highest office one could achieve, and become the Prime Minister. Some would stop there, bowing their heads at mere prowess and perfection, not Margaret Thatcher, though. The party was, it was hers. The people were hers, and she forged ahead. <clears throat> The economy was brought to heights that no one could ever believe possible. England was brought to the forefront of international politics, and her domestic position was secured. It was not simple flattered by that letter to her title. She was the Iron Lady, and she wouldn't hesitate to get what she wanted. She succeeded in every way, and she had confidence that her winning would streak would continue. And yet, yet she felt worry pain within her chest as she overlooked like London. London, where she saw her successes, she also saw factors that were outside of her control: tensions ebbing and flowing in the Pacific and Atlantic alike, flux of opposition that she couldn't fully smoke out, and the worst of all, the oil crisis. The chaos in the Middle East was the most dangerous thing to ever she had built up. And she was all too aware that she had built a house, built a house of cards, a house built up of the hardiest stock, made of the best and most elegant architecture, but a house of cards that only required but one catastrophe to fall to pieces. While she could focus on every individual crisis, which she would need to, she could also drink to the magnificent success of her reign. God save the Iron Lady. Yes, she's done a pretty good job, I'd say so far. But uh, I thought this is state of Rhodesia. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, that's not where Rhodesia is. This is it's over here. But oh my goodness. Is it, I, th I think, is the game going to end after this? Oh, you're actually fighting a war. Who are you fighting, Botswana? Yeah, it is Botswana. Where's Botswana? Elizabethville. Oh, Botswana is Zimbabwe Democratic Front. A conservative democracy versus a liberal democracy. You are not that one, dude. Cool. English history is written, and nothing happens. Because we already did that act earlier. Hmm. Okay. Uh, trainer pilots. The RAF suffered from a dearth of pilots throughout the Second World War. Dallas, uh, those that we had finangled may have been some of the bravest men in Britain, but truly skilled aviators were few and far between. Thus far, England is capable of maintaining an air force equal in account of that of the Germans, Americans, and Japanese, and so must rely on each of its pilots' fighter skills more than the world's three superpowers. Every possible effort must be made to ensure that they are the best in the world. Yes, visit some urban centers, please, too. 26 billion. Never enough. Never enough. But at least it does not increasing. That's always a good thing, though. Uh, I'll get a little bit more army XP. Tanks are amazing. Armor, it just barely goes down. It just barely goes down, which is nice. Efficiency? We're very, very efficient. Pretty god darn efficient. Are there any wars going on right now? World tension, 5%. That's not bad. Ongoing conflicts. Eh, Egyptian, oh, Egyptian Civil War, huh? Cool. Uh, advances in air doctrine. Having made several advances in updating the Royal Air Force, there is no doubt that our doctrine requires updating. After all, there would be no point in improving our Air Force if none of their strategies were updated too. Efficiency must be assured if we are properly against defending the Luftwaffe. As soon as the RAF will reclaim England's skies, we pray that they remain forever more clear. Good. Countryside time. 0.48 and ready to increase the GDP once more. 0.49. Not that much of an increase, not gonna lie. Not really an increase up that much. Alright then. And we're halfway done with that. Every man works, you bet they do. House of Commons. 69%, nice. Oh, see, oh. Group destroy, that's nice. The Royal Party is not doing great right now. Hmm. It's quite not ideal then. Hopefully we can still win. So we need depth charges and sonar. So be it. Oh, another division. Great. <clears throat> and now we're out of manpower. Construction spending. Did that go up? Maybe not. Cool. Uh, jet engine innovation. Once one among the Royal Air Force's biggest issues is obsolescence in the age of jet. The hair has been an encouraging start, but more will have to be done. Most of our research on jet engines has not progressed far beyond the standards of 1943, considering we heretofore lack the knowledge and, more importantly, the funds to meaningfully proceed in its relevant avenues. This must be rectified post haste. Let us jump headfirst into a new age by building a jet industry of our own. Yes. Uh, if I can increase, like, 
political support here, that would be great. Because I don't want UE to do well. That would not be very good for us. Military in states democracy in Iberia. Oh, behold the power of the people. That's interesting. We're going to coup you demo democratically, I guess. Cool. You know what? Don't make the tank for now. Let's not make anything right now. Because I want to convert these divisions over. Um, it just, Actually, is this still going up? It is barely still going up, though. 2.56, modern industrial, cutting edge industrial equipment. That looks pretty good, not going to lie. Jet engine innovation. Uh, v stalls. Uh, England's runways have become adequate and suitable to the demands of most modern jet fighters. Rather than reinventing the airbase at ruinous cost, um, the Ministry of Defense instead recommends retrofitting our new Harriers with vertical takeoff and landing engines. The capability to leave a base without a long runway will ensure the continued use of much of our World War II era airstrips. Oh. Let time go on, I guess. That's fine. Uh, let's see, we're both going with that stuff. That's not bad. Armor. There we go. 26 billion, huh? Never, ever enough. You don't do that, it's fine. Nope. Yeah, I'm starting to get a little worried about the whole election thing. Next one. Because they have a lot... That's a lot of support everywhere. They're doing a good job campaigning. Maybe I should have, uh... Oh. Did it go somewhere? Oh, now it's back down here. Yeah, they're doing a really good job. Like campaigning and stuff and we're down really far in Somerset we're down in northern Wales we're down in Yorkshire the West Midlands aren't too far away though which is good uh, Sussex East Midlands hovering jet that sounds kind of cool but let's do the next one first uh, I'm trying to get through all these focuses before we see that this might be it so the Harry's missiles another aspect of air combat in which we fall short as weaponry foreign fighters are equipped with devastatingly powerful missiles capable of turning aircraft into bits of modern slag mid-flight equipping our Harry's with some of the world's class missiles our boffins have developed is an unquestionable must so a hovering jet aeronautical engineer Brody Poole admired the aircraft sitting on the runway as, as his jet engine screamed in preparation for its most important test yet where the four years of constant and design work made loving it a necessity a broad fuselage with semicircular air intakes underneath the wings, which led, led and led to, into the two rotatable vector thrust jet engines. Air all right came a buzzer or buzz over the loudspeaker on the base that started off NASA's low 10 meter elevation. The craft slowly, slowly rose up as the pilot commanded it. It stopped only after a few seconds and set an air hovering. Brody scribbled down whatever note he could see. It was remarkably stable, and more so than some helicopters he'd seen. The voice over the loudspeaker interjected again. All right, lower her back down. We'll do some more tests later. Brody couldn't wait to watch them. Could take off like a helicopter. Oh my goodness. Very, very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm fighting this GDP, man. This is this is nuts. Just nuts. Civilian austerity? No. No, 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 no. We are barely increasing our GDP. Like, even if any at all. So now we're no longer the Iberian Union, but the Iberian Federation. We can sovereignty, that makes sense, yeah. Exemplary, huh? Okay, cool. And they have the Algerian mandate as a puppet, huh? Colonial government, huh? Okay, cool. Harrier's missiles, awesome. We haven't done all the focuses, which we need to lose a hundred political power. Since the old guard, the old guard royalists have spent the last several years complaining and ranting about Thatcher's every little action. Hiding smugly behind their their brained positions as veteran politicians, they've been a thorn in their side for too long, and said we put the final nail in the golf coffin of the old guard. Good, urban centers. 1950s sonar. How about 1960s sonar? So then we can actually do this carrier screen stuff. But it seems like this is like the final thing we can do for our focuses. I'm not sure. But we'll see what happens, because it seems like we're, we're nearing the end, it seems like. Wait, hold on. Why did I make so many of these? I have not been thinking about why I've been throwing on so many APCs. If anything, I should throw on more tanks in that. But you know what? Actually, having more organization isn't bad. Especially we got so much soft attack and so much breakthrough. I think it's okay. That's definitely not the most ideal division, but whatever. Yeah, GDP, it, it's... Even with this deficit, the GDP, I don't know why it keeps going down. It might be a little, maybe, bug in the game, maybe, perhaps? I don't know. But that's not cool, man. It's not cool. Good. 
silence the old guard, lose a little political power next. There's nothing else besides stuff down here, right? Um, we did miss this one, so cracking the UE. We've discerned from modeling the United England is the United only name. A deep chasm has opened up between the two rival factions within the conservative Macmillanists and Mac Mod Modeling's liberals. Exploiting this weakness by showing the seeds of division, bribes, rumors, and blackmail will leave the party collapse into petty infighting, all while the public watches against aghast at seeing the representatives soup solo and broad daylight. Ah, yes. Ooh, specialized stuff. I like specialized stuff. Nice. Good. At least it does not increasing. So, uh, America, how is McNamara? And conservative democracy. It looks like he's a oh, Democrat. Okay, cool. Conservative democracy. Middling. Okay, so the Blue Order. An intriguing work of fiction has been gaining traction around the world in the past few weeks. Said novel for the title of The Blue Order, authored under the pen name of Miles Lloyd, depicts a world in which a radical authoritarian politician runs for the American presidency in 1932, associated with the revived Bull Moose Party. Ooh! This president, only known to be reused as the president, quickly proceeds to consolidate his power under the guise of defending America and rapidly turns into American economy into one field by preparation for an eventual war. With this in mind, he issues an ultimatum in Nazi Germany upon the remilitarization of the Rhineland in 1936. Any further military movements will be met with swift American reprisal. Upon the onslaught of Austria, the president declares war on Germany under the guise of Safeguarding liberty. History has then lost in this world for two decades. Upon sunrise of some arbitrary day, the world is revealed to have been torn apart by the Second World War. In Russia, the Soviets have lost all of Eastern Siberia to the American Republic. While the Wow, America went on, had a two-front war like that? Well, the death of Bukharin throws the remainder into chaos. And in Asia, the state of Japan lies under the American supervision, having lost against them prior. In Europe, the British Isles, Iberia, and Italy remain as the last major independent regions, having formed a strange alliance of democracy and fascism, with the Soviets being a previous member of Buk before Bukharin's death. In the remains of mainland Europe, American puppet republics sit under lock and chain. American control is not absolute, however, with various warlord states waiting for the sunset to liberate their homelands. The president cannot live forever, however, and upon his assassination at the end of the novel, the sun begins crossing the horizon as a destiny of humanity hangs in the balance. What kind of world is this? That sounds like fun. When is TNO2? Happy 1974, my friends. We are going through these years sort of quickly. We're getting more factories, even though I'm only building up nuclear reactors. And we're almost done building nuclear reactors in every state. Jesus. That's amazing. Um, wow. I'm not really sure what to say to that. We are very nuclearly inclined, I guess you could say. And we're out of a focus because I can't do it this one yet because we don't have... We need to finish a shipbuilding project. So... Um, I'm not sure this is going to be the final episode. This actually might be, because I don't think there's much after this. So, I'm going to assume that this is the final episode. If there is something a little bit after this, I might tack it on at the end. But, I guess for now, that's going to be the campaign, unless there's something else. So, you'll know if there's a ne next episode after this. But regardless, if you enjoyed this ep campaign so far, or this entire campaign, or just this episode, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you all tomorrow in potentially another campaign, or continuing this one. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.